Okay, uh, the next thing that is on your schedule is the project submission, which is uh, due on Friday the 19th. And so you need to upload your project report to MU Online before noon on Friday. So you've got a little bit less than 48 hours. If you'd like to stop by and show me your spreadsheet before now and then, I'd be glad to take a look. Uh, my office hours today are from 2 till 4, and tomorrow they're from 12.30 until 2.30. So uh, feel free to stop by then. Um, and uh, then the next thing on the schedule following the project would be uh, the cost estimation assignment. And so that's covering things that you learned in the recorded class on Monday, today's lecture, up through next week. And so there's a lot of different ideas that are kind of bundled together in that homework assignment. It's due on Friday the 26th. Any questions on the announcements? Okay, um, we're going to start by talking about cost indices, and I'm going to show you a cost index before we even define what it is, because I hope that by looking at what the index is, you'll start to get an idea of what they are, how they're generated, how they're used. So I'm pulling up a cost index right now that's used specifically for the construction industry. This is some data related to the pricing of a, a single family house. And so over here on the far left side, it's saying the year. And then the main thing I want us to focus on is this column that says annual index. And so what you'll notice about the trend is that the annual index is going up. It starts in 1964. And so the baseline year is 2005. So what they're saying is that the cost of a single family house, a new house, that was built in 2005 is 100. Do you think that means that a new house was $100 in 2005? No. No, a new house wasn't $100. Inflation is bad, but it's not that bad. Um, but look at, just think in terms of if it was 100 in 2005, then what happened in 2006? Now it's 106. So what that does is that gives you an idea that between 2005 and 2006, the price of a new single family home increased by 6% just in the course of one year. Now, what about 2007? It says 107. It didn't go up 7% just from the previous year. This 107 is still making reference to the baseline year of 2005. So it's 107 compared to the cost of a new single family house was 100 in 2005. Then the, uh, the index eventually does something a little bit unexpected and surprising. It goes down. We don't see that very often. What's that call, call when prices go down? Deflation, right. And as I've uh, mentioned a couple of times in the class already, there was like a financial crisis at the end of 2008, beginning of 2009. And uh, it had a, an especially big effect on um, the housing industry because a lot of people had their loans foreclosed. And so there was a lot more supply than demand of housing for a couple of years. And so that actually, that increase in supply, since so many people were thrown out by banks onto the street, um, that reduced the cost of housing for a while. But it came back with a vengeance, and the most, compl most recent complete year that we have data for in 2018, it was at 130. So this is giving you a sense for how a cost index is used to track the pricing, the relative pricing of things over time. Okay, so that's one cost index. Let's look at another. That was specifically for construction. The government actually puts together um, pricing data for all sorts of things, all sorts of categories, not just construction. Um, they look at the average American and uh, the sorts of things that you spend your money on. And they weight the pricing of each category according to this relative importance. And then they look at how the, uh, the pricing changes from month to month. And so you'll, you'll see that um, they're saying that compared to all the money the average American spends, 
food accounts for about 13% of expenditures. And between February and March of 2019, food prices went up by 0.3% on an annual basis during that one month period. And so they look at all of the different individual components that go into food. They're looking at the food you eat at home. So they have rice, bread, pastries, meat. And they even break it down into like what kinds of meat, you know, what percentage of your overall budget is being spent on beef versus pork versus birds and all that sort of thing. Um, so we'll get out of the food here. It's lunchtime. We don't want to spend too much time there. They have a, the amount broken up into food away from home. So they know that, relatively speaking, Americans spend proportionally more of their income at food at home than food at restaurants. They've got energy expenditures. And so some of the pricing is a lot more volatile. You'll look that uh, energy prices in a one-month period went up 6% on an annualized basis. And it looks like that was largely driven by the increase in cost of motor fuel. So the point is, is that the uh, consumer price index, which is a similar thing to what we just looked at for houses, but it looks at all the things that you maybe need to buy uh, to get by as a typical American. The consumer price index has uh, people going out into the field and gathering this price data. Um, at a variety of regional locations so that they're getting a sense for how prices are changing over time, but also how prices change from place to place in the United States. Uh, for instance, I was in Massachusetts over the weekend, and it's really expensive there. I mean, I just kind of take it for granted how cheap stuff is here in Huntington, like restaurants and lodging. And um, you know, there are places that have a lot higher cost of living than Huntington does. And so in that sense, uh, we're pretty fortunate to live where a dollar goes a lot further than it does in some other more expensive markets. Uh, let me scroll down through here. They break out specific amounts um, like services, except for energy services. They have different summaries just to look at where people are spending their money. So if you, if you look at everything except for food, that's 86% of spending. Everything expect, except for shelter, 66%. So it just kind of gives you an idea of the typical American and where they spend their money. And then if you look at how that changes over time, what you can do is you can predict in the future how costs may uh, increase. And so if you know the past history of the consumer price index, and so this is the consumer price index for all items. And it looks like our baseline year was in 1983. And then this top row is uh, months. So if we look at January of each year, if 83 was the 100, now in 2019, it's 251. So that means that if you bought a basket of groceries, well, not just groceries, because remember, this basket includes everything. It includes housing, fuel, clothing, entertainment, everything. Everything that, you, everything that you bought in 2000, excuse me, in 1983 was $100. It would cost you $251 to buy that same amount of stuff now. Um, so the way that we can use this cost index is to predict how prices may change over time. Uh, so you look at, if you have data on how much it costs to construct a building 10 years ago, and you know the individual categories. You know the material expenses, the labor expenses, and all these other categories. What you can do is you can look at what was the, the price index back then. And then you look at what is the price index now. And you can scale the costs from then till now using a ratio. And there's a lot of different price index uh, data that's out there. Some of it's specific to construction. Some of it is more on consumers. Uh, there's labor-specific pricing data, equipment pricing data. So there's a lot of different possibilities where you can go out and get that data. Here's the formula that you need to use to apply a cost index. And so what you would do is you'd look up what was the index at some baseline time. 
And so remember where we were saying that the uh, construction data for the new houses, was that 2005 was our 100 baseline? So I naught would be 100. And if we knew that the index, the overall index now, let's go back to the specific numbers here. All right, our baseline was 2005. Now is 130. So then the way that you could use that data would be to, with a specific cost, like if you knew the actual price of a house back in 2005, then you could predict what that equivalent house would cost today. That would be the C sub T. You're trying to find out the cost now at a given time, like the present. So any questions on what a cost index is or how we can use it? OK. So to uh, get your hands dirty with the cost index and get some experience, what we're going to do is take the case of a repair garage where we know what the individual cost components were back in 2004. And not only that, we know the, the total cost and we know what the components were. Some of it for labor, some for materials, some of it for equipment costs. We want to predict how much it's going to cost to uh, build a equivalent garage in 2008 where we know the index data for each. So what you need to do is come up with a weighted index for 2004 and 2008. And we've done weighted averages before. Um, the weighted average, remember, is that this percentage is going to be multiplied by the index in that year and add everything together to come up with the overall weighted average. And the, uh, the formula here, we're going to be solving for C sub T, where T is 2008. That's when we're trying to find out how much the equivalent garage would cost in 2008. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've got the index for 2004 and 2008 on the screen. The index in 2004 is 149. The weighted index for 2008 is 178.5. Everybody get those same numbers for the weighted index? OK. So then if we know I in 2004, that was the past, and I in 2008, which is the year we're trying to find the cost data for, then you can put those, substitute those in to this formula to find the cost in 2008. Okay, so the overall cost in 2008 is going to be 778,691. And then if that's the total cost, we can find the cost of the individual components by just multiply it by the weighting. So the labor, the material, the equipment. OK. Um, now we're going to continue doing cost index, the, the cost index method, because it can, can be combined with some of the other approaches like that we'll learn on. Friday of this week and Monday of next week. Um, they're additive, where you can combine, for example, the index method with um, the uh, unit method or 
you know, it, it's kind of modular. And so the, the in-class exercise that you'll have in the future, you may uh, see this again, both in the homework and also in the class. But I'd encourage you to at least take a look at the homework assignment. Even though it's not due for nine days, it's always a good idea to get an early start and uh, kind of see what you're going to be asked on the homework so that you can start drawing the connection between what you see in the in-class exercise and how that's supposed to apply to the homework assignment. All right, that's it for today. I will see you in class on Friday.